Hello, my friend. Welcome to your sleep story. My name is Stephen Dalton, and it's my great privilege to be the voice that you listen to as you go to sleep tonight. In tonight's story, we'll visit a farm. But this is no ordinary farm. It's a farm that induces deep sleep in all of its inhabitants, and it's called Sleepy Farm. If this video helps you, please do hit the like button. It's a simple act, but it truly helps us to keep making stories for you to go to sleep to. This particular story came from suggestions from a number of you so please feel free to make suggestions in the comments. I love to read them, and I love to hear from you. Now we will do the countdown. This is a relaxation session, which will lead you into a deeper, restful place and enable you to engage with your imagination before tonight's story. 10. Allow yourself to feel supported by the floor or the bed beneath you. And remember that you are also supported by the Earth, our planet. Feel that solidity, that constantness, that groundedness, and maybe allow yourself to sink a little deeper. Nine. The day is done. Whatever thoughts you have about the day are not useful now. Let go of them. Don't fight them. If they come, they come. Acknowledge them, and let them float away, like leaves on a river. Whatever has been, has been, and likewise for thoughts about tomorrow. You don't need to engage with them now. Let them be leaves on a river, too. Just engage with my voice. With this moment. Eight. You are safe. You are secure. Allow my voice to be an anchor of safety for you. A voice that will never take you anywhere unsafe. Allow that feeling of safety to help you let go a little more now. Seven. Feel into your body. Notice anywhere you're still holding. Maybe in your face. Or your feet. Or your belly. Let them go now. Let them rest. 
Your body has worked hard for you today. Allow it time for peace. Six. Know that peace lives within you. It is always there. It is your constant friend. It's not always obvious. But when you look for it, you will find it. Five. Perhaps allow a little gratitude now. Gratitude for this moment. For the opportunity of rest. For the simple things. For shelter. For tonight's sleep story. Four. This is your time. You have nowhere to be. Nowhere to go. Three. Engage with the coziness now. The coziness of lying down. Being wrapped up. Feeling warm inside. Two. Let go a little bit more now, wherever you're still holding, just let go. One, beginning to see a beautiful, cozy farm now in your mind's eye. As I tell you tonight's sleep story. There once was a farm. On first inspection, this was a regular farm. It had animals of all shapes and sizes. It had a farmer and his wife and all of those storybook cliches. The barn, the owl at night, the pigs, the cows, you name it. When it came to being a farm, it ticked all of the boxes. But, there was one very notable difference. There were no roosters. Can you guess why? Because on this farm, everyone liked to sleep in. In fact, everyone including the animals, liked to sleep most of the time. Did I mention the name of the farm? It was called Sleepy Farm. Now the heart of Sleepy Farm was undoubtedly the farmer's house. A charming cottage 
with stone walls and wooden beams. It was a deeply comfortable place that him and his wife had created. It was adorned with wild flowers during spring and luminous fireflies during summer nights. Each season had its own magic, contributing its own touch of coziness. The farmer, a gentle man named Walter, and his wife, Mary, made sure that their home felt like a sanctuary, not just for them, but for every being that lived on the farm. The farm had been in Mary's family for hundreds of years. And when she married Walter, who had a passion for farming, their union was a good one. Mary had a calming presence and a nurturing spirit. She was kind of like a human embodiment of Sleepy Farm itself. She was one of those people that when you spend time in their presence, you feel immediately relaxed. She was very connected to the earth. She spent her afternoons tending to the vegetable garden or knitting blankets. Her actions a meditative dance that often lulled the surrounding animals into a peaceful slumber as they watched her. Walter would join her whenever farm chores allowed to sip some chamomile tea and relish the quietude. They both deeply loved every animal on the farm and knew each by name, ensuring that each one was as comfortable and well rested as possible. Their bedroom was also a haven of sleep, with heavy curtains that blocked out the morning sun. For those days, which were most days, when they felt like sleeping in. A handmade quilt, crafted by Mary's grandmother, graced their bed, and it was as if generations of sleep had been woven into its fabric. Lavender sachets 
were strategically placed around the room. Their scent acted as a gentle, aromatic lullaby for the senses. The kitchen, often called the heart of the home, really was at Sleepy Farm. It was cozy, warm and comfortable on every level. Copper pots and pans hung above the stove and an assortment of herbal teas filled a whole cupboard, each offering different variations of relaxation. Mary would often bake lavender or chamomile cookies, the smell wafting through the air and working its soothing magic on all who inhaled it. Walter and Mary lived their lives at a pace that most would consider slow, but to them it was perfect. For they truly understood the pure and great joy of slowing down, of savoring each passing moment, and of creating a space so serene that it allowed every resident two-legged or four to find peace and most importantly restful sleep. Now let's go and visit some of the animals who called Sleepy Farm their home. Daisy the cow was truly a creature of habit. Every night, as the sky began to darken, she'd leisurely make her way to her favorite spot under the old willow tree. It felt to her that the tree always welcomed her. With its sprawling branches into its embrace for her nightly ritual. As she settled down the gentle wind would sway the willow branches, creating a soothing melody that whispered through the leaves. Daisy loved this spot, not just for its beauty, but for its sense the earthiness of the soil, the freshness of the grass, and the subtle sweetness of the willow leaves above. Her eyes would grow heavy with each deep breath. 
as if the very air was sprinkled with sleep dust. And before long, she'd be in a dream-filled slumber. Of course, sleep was very familiar to her, because she spent most of her days asleep as well, as did most inhabitants of Sleepy Farm. Now Oliver the pig, he was indeed a connoisseur of comfort. His muddy wallow was located just beside the old wooden fence well shaded and well worn from many a night of blissful sleep. But it wasn't just any mud for Oliver. No, it had to be the perfect consistency too watery, and it wouldn't provide enough support. Too dry, and it wasn't as soothing. Once he found that ideal mixture of mud, which was often around sunset, he'd circle around kneading it with his hooves, as if he were preparing a bed of the softest down, and with a satisfied grunt, he would finally settle down, tucking his little snout in the crook of his leg, the last rays of sun would cast long shadows as Oliver closed his eyes, enveloped by the warmth of his muddy bed and the stillness of the evening air. Barney the sheep had a cozy spot picked out for himself in the corner of the meadow. It was surrounded by tall, gentle grass that would sway in the summer evening breeze almost like ocean waves lapping at the shore. He'd nuzzle into the ground, laying down in a fluffy cloud of his own wool, so soft that it was like he was cuddled up in a heavenly quilt, the rustling of leaves from a nearby apple tree would accompany the delicate hooting of the owl, who we'll meet a little later. It was a sound that Barney had come to associate with the approach of nighttime. As the moon would rise higher in the sky, casting silvery rays, 
Barney the sheep would close his eyes and breathe in the crisp, clean air. And it never took long before he'd drift into a serene slumber. His dreams as fluffy as the wool that encased him. Now Whiskers the cat was unusually for a sleepy farm. Something of a night owl. But compared to other cats, he would sleep most of the night. He had a special nook for sleep. It was a wooden crate placed strategically in the corner of the barn loft filled with straw that he'd kneaded and turned until it was just right. This elevated position not only kept him warm, but also gave him a vantage point to oversee his kingdom. He loved the quietness that fell over the farm at dusk. Interrupted by the occasional call of the owl or the whispering wind, Whiskers tail would twitch ever so slightly as he settled in, curling around himself and tucking his nose beneath his paw. The last thing he'd usually hear before drifting off was the faint, soothing sound of the other animals settling down for the night. That and the distant twinkle of stars that seemed to wink at him through a small barn window were his lullabies. Have I mentioned Henrietta the duck? Well, she loved to nestle by the pond's edge. She had built herself an impressive nest from an assortment of reeds and feathers. Henrietta loved the gentle lap of water against the bank, a rhythmic sound that she'd come to rely on to carry her into dreamland. As she nestled into her nest, he listened to the soft calls of her fellow ducks and the peeping of frogs, all merging in to a peaceful, natural symphony. The water in the pond 
reflected the deep blues and purples of the twilight sky. And sometimes, if she was still awake, she'd catch the first stars coming out to play. When the moment came, Henrietta would give a satisfied quack, pull a few reeds over herself like a blanket, and drift off to sleep, secure in the knowledge that her cozy world would still be there when she woke. Not far from Henrietta lived Freddy the Frog, who had found his personal haven on a lily pad floating in a secluded corner of the pond. The lily pad was just the right size for him to stretch out comfortably. And being close to the water had its own set of soothing sounds, ripples, the distant splashing of fish, and the general murmur of water life. Overhead, the branches of a weeping willow dipped just low enough to provide a natural canopy, making him feel safely hidden from the world. As darkness fell, Fireflies would start their nightly dance, casting fleeting spots of light on the water's surface. Freddy always felt at peace watching the spectacle. And with a final, contented croak, he'd tuck his legs under him and let the subtle ebb and flow of the pond rock him gently to sleep. Muriel the Owl at a lofty perch, high in the branches of an ancient oak tree, which stood like a sentinel near the edge of Sleepy Farm. She loved to watch the world from up there particularly as the setting sun made way for the tranquil blues and blacks of night. Now owls may be creatures of the night, but Muriel savored her rest just as much as anyone else. 
her hollow in the tree was lined with a layer of soft feathers that she had shed over the years, creating an insulating bed that protected her from any nightly chill. Whenever the wind rustled through the trees, it would sound like whispered lullabies to her keen ears. Slowly, her eyelids would become heavy, and she'd snuggle into her hollow, fluffing her feathers around her like a cozy duvet, and off to dreamland she'd go. Henry the horse had a spacious stall in the barn, filled with fresh straw, and adorned with a blanket that the farmer's wife, Mary, had lovingly crafted. This wasn't just any store. It was strategically located near a window so that it let in the soft glow of the moon, casting dreamy shadows across the floor. The scent of hay and wood filled the air comforting and familiar. The muffled sounds of other animals shifting and settling in their own corners of the barn were a nightly routine that Henry had come to find incredibly Reassuring. When it was time to sleep, he'd circle in his stall a few times before lying down, his hooves tucking under him as he'd lay his head on a pile of hay that served as a pillow. And within minutes, he'd be whisked away into dreams of galloping freely across meadows. Petula the dog was perhaps the coziest resident of all. She had a little doghouse near the farmhouse, but she rarely used it. Most nights, you'd find her on the front porch of the farmer's home, lounging on a plaid outdoor cushion the farmer's wife had made just for her. Petula had found that the cushion perfectly contoured to her body giving her a sense of snugness that even the doghouse couldn't offer. 
Walter the farmer would often sit beside her for a spell, sharing the last moments of the day. A calm and quiet companionship as the sun would dip below the horizon. When night would fully envelop Sleepy Farm, Petula would listen to the chorus of crickets, a comforting, monotonous melody that acted as nature's lullaby. Even the distant hoots and ribbits seemed to contribute to this symphony of sleepiness. Slowly but surely, her eyes would get heavier, and her wagging tail would still. Petula would finally rest her head on her paws, letting out a contented sigh as she surrendered to the pull of sleep, certain that another peaceful, sleepy day awaited her when she awoke. As night fully descended on sleepy farm, a tranquil hush enveloped the land. Walter and Mary after saying good night to each of the animals, even to Freddy the Frog, would retreat to their haven-like bedroom. The curtains were drawn, and the room was bathed in the soft glow of a single table lamp with a gentle good night kiss they switched off the lamp and snuggled under their cherished quilt allowing the scent of lavender to lull them into peaceful dreams Outside, the barn and the farm were equally serene. Daisy the cow, already in a state of slumber, let out a contented sigh. Every creature big and small, surrendered to the welcoming arms of sleep, as if Sleepy Farm was tucking them in for the night. The moon, full and bright, stood sentinel in the sky, casting a silvery glow that seemed to say, rest now, for tomorrow is another beautiful day. And so they did each and every soul 
and sleepy farm, sleeping soundly, bathed in the comfort and love that only such a special place could offer.